buses. That had me nervous. It was really taking quite a little while to get the live video started. The circle was turning and turning. So hope that's not a sign of uh, drop connections and all that good stuff. But anyway, so good morning. Welcome to Lady Bosses. It's Tuesday morning and I'll take this minute before we start and while I'm waiting for some people to jump on to remind you that um, as long as we're isolated and locked down, um, keep encouraging you to share your businesses, share the ways we can support you as a woman, as a businesswoman. Um, any share it on the page on a daily basis. And when this is all over, I think I'll probably open up a day a week. Morning, Rachie. I'll probably open up at least one day a week where we can support each other by doing the same thing. So for right now, you can post something every day. Um, and we'll set a day of the week, I don't know, maybe Friday or something where you can post a little bit, of, you know, beautiful salon in town. If there's anything, let us know what you need. You know, do you need people to buy gift certificates for later? What can we do to help? So every day, take advantage of that. You're all jumping on. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Judy. I hope I didn't, I probably missed a couple people, but good morning. Glad to have you here. Okay. Let's get started. We're talking about structure today. Um, because of everything we're going through, I almost feel morning. Oh, we're back. Hmm. Yeah. I totally disappeared for a minute. I thought that I was afraid that might happen. Okay. We're back. Bunny says I lost you. Just me. Is everybody, it looks like everybody's back. None others. Okay. I guess we're back. Wow. Okay. <laughs> if that happens again, I'm going to maybe try up on, on my laptop, but we'll see. This is usually a way better than my laptop. Okay. Let's keep going. Structure right now with everything we're experiencing in the world. How many of you almost feel like structure thing, but you just can't pull it off and, and everything's just kind of falling apart. Um, the thing I want to talk about first, is that structure is not a luxury. Structure is just not something you do because you want to be a little bit better. You want your business to be a little bit better. You want your health to be a little bit better. So you build in structure. That is not the way structure works. Okay. Think about building a house. If you build a house on the beach, close, to the you know that and you're just building your house with a foundation of sand that it's only going to be a matter of time until it completely collapses. Build it with solid concrete foundation. It will be lasting. So not having structure is going to cause complete collapse in your life, just like it will for a building, for a physical structure. So, so important. It's going to, if you don't have structure in your life right now, and you're just sort of letting things happen as they happen, the collapse it's going to cause is going to affect every part of your, your, your person. It's going to affect you mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually. Every area is going to be affected if you don't have structure. Keeps freezing. Hmm. Thanks, Jane. I don't know. Well... You know what I might have to do? Just have to give up and go downstairs. We've done that before, but we'll be closer to my modem and maybe that's the answer. Okay, I've got to open my door and carry five things at once. I hate to have keep freezing and have it, um, just have to keep starting 50 million times. That's not worth it. And your time's too valuable and we're just not gonna do that. Okay, let's do this. Gotta raise this a little bit. Come on. Ah. So you're not looking at my boobs. <laughs> okay. That's better, I think. Okay, we'll see if this works. We'll see if we don't freeze as much. A little darker. Ah, but not too bad. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Maybe oh, maybe from my end it might <laughs> Well, Jane, either way, you took me downstairs, so we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna see what happens. Okay, so structure's critical. Think about it. The very things we're doing right now to try and keep us safe and to try and protect our health and the health of all our loved ones are ending up to become very counterintuitive. Okay, we're locked down. We have to stay home. We have to isolate so that this thing doesn't spread the way it, it has the potential of spreading. Oh, good. It's good. Thanks, Rach. 
But as a result of being locked down, as a result of all this extra stress we're experiencing and this total lack of structure because our whole world's been turned upside down. And if you've got a family, it's every single person in your family. Because of all of that, it's weakening every part of you. It's weakening you mentally. It's weakening you spiritually, emotionally, physically. And if you're totally weakening yourself, do you understand that physically you're making yourself so much more susceptible to the very thing you're avoiding? The very thing you're trying to avoid, you are becoming more susceptible to you because you're living in a weakened state. You're living in a weakened state because right now you're built on sand. You need to be built on structure, on something solid because it's critical. It's not a luxury. It's so critical. So let's talk about it. We talked a while ago, uh, a few weeks ago about self-care and that's probably where it, that's what you need. And then we'll talk about how to structure it, but you need self-care in all areas, again, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically in each one of those areas. If you want to be strong, if you really want to fight this the best way you can, what can you do in each one of those areas on a daily basis to take care of yourself? And again, like I always say, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be a hundred things. What one little thing can you do on a daily basis to feed yourself, to strengthen yourself, to pour that solid foundation so you're strong going forward and you're strong fighting this thing and strong supporting your family and strong being the person you need to be for everybody. Because as women, we just, we need to take care of everyone, right? It's just, it's just the way it is. But you can't do that if you don't take care of yourself. So it's important. So decide what things you can do. And then we've got to talk about how you're going to do them because it's not easy to find the time or the place to squeeze that stuff in, right? It's just, and you just feel so drained because you've let yourself go now for, I mean, I think we're in the fifth week. You've let yourself go for a while now, not taking care of yourself and you just feel too weak to do it, but it's not too late to start. You just start by doing one little thing. So we're all in different situations. Some of you are home now with families who shouldn't be home now. Kids should be in school. Your husband or significant other should be off at work. Maybe you should be off at work and maybe you're stuck home. Maybe it's just you and a significant other or a spouse and maybe you're alone. So there are a lot of different situations. If you came from a job and now you can't be at your job and you've got to work from home, there are a lot of different scenarios. Sometimes you have real time sensitive things that like you're given stuff to do at home. You have to do it now. And so you're getting it done. You're pushing and you're getting it done. Maybe you're getting it done sitting in front of TV all day though, too, and trying to do 50 million things at once. And that's making you feel even more stretched because there's like too much, too much coming in at you. But maybe there's stuff, projects you have to get done that really aren't as critical from a time standpoint. So you're home and because you like have, you, you just haven't built in structure and this thing is throwing you for a loop in so many different ways, you're just not doing it. You know, I've seen, and I've talked to a few people who are experiencing that, like, oh my gosh, I just can't, I can't buckle down and get my work done. And it's so funny because it takes, it takes me back to 25 years ago or so. I, um, the worst job I had ever, and it was only the worst because it couldn't have been more ill-suited for me, was a, uh, a sales job for a petrochemical company. And it was the first time I had a job where I didn't have to show up in an office and I just had to be self-disciplined and just like get it done, just get out there, build a sales force, sell a lot of wax, yada, yada. Um, I was really excited because it, it was just like, wow, I, this, this is just an exciting job to have, but didn't realize how poorly suited it would be for me until I did it. It was terrible because I got up in the morning and I didn't want to do anything. It was so easy for me to remember how, how great it was to just go show up at a job, have work to do, and go home and at five o'clock, just forget about it and move into my other life. And now I just had to get up and I had to think about, you know, researching and, and contacts and who was I going to call and set up appointments. And I didn't want to do any of that. Oh my gosh. I wanted to just sit and watch TV or do something else. I remember I played with day trading for a couple of days. Um, yeah, a couple of days. That's it. That's yeah. <laughs> Don't do it unless it's your field. Um, 
But I just, uh, I, I just, I couldn't do it. I realized I had no self-discipline and all of that was because I didn't have any structure and I didn't know how to create structure then. So I, I didn't know how to do that, but it was a total failure. I just, I mean, I did okay. I floated, you know, but I, I did it for a year and then stopped. And so then here's the killer. I remember going for a job interview. Oh, I don't know, soon after. And again, it was kind of a, you know, working independently, sales related kind of job. Why in the world I thought to even do that again? I don't know. But I remember the guy who was interviewing me. He said, uh, he said, so, so tell me what is your biggest weakness? Well, I knew that my biggest weakness was I did not have self-discipline. I wasn't a self-starter. I had no structure. And that's exactly what he needed. So I just sat there and didn't say anything. And he said, he said, I only know of one person in all of history who could sit and say they were perfect. And that's what he thought I was implying. But in reality, it's like my biggest weakness was exactly the thing he didn't want to hear because he sure as heck wasn't going to hire me for a job that needed me to be strong in the area that I was most weak. So now fast forward to 20 years ago when my husband and I started a business. We, um, it was the first time I left corporate America since I was 17 years old. And again, I had no structure. I'd get up in the morning, pour my coffee and sit down to watch the news or Good Morning America and determine that, you know, I'm going to drink my coffee. And as soon as my coffee is finished, I'll, then I'll go to the office to get to work. And next thing I knew, it was four o'clock and time to make dinner. And I hadn't moved except to maybe refill my coffee. So it was a problem. And the thing is, I could always crunch time would come. Okay, payroll's due today. I could slam, slam, you know, knock it out, get it done. And then just back to doing nothing. And then I started my health coaching and started to put more on my plate and realized this isn't going to work. Like something has to give. And I've realized that what's made all the difference has been to totally create structure that I could live according to. And that takes a long time to figure out. You're not going to come up with a structure today that's going to work perfectly for you, say, a month from now or a year from now. You're always going to be learning and deciding what works the best. Through this whole season of isolation and COVID-19, um, I've realized again that, wow, I've got to redefine my structure because I don't want to get off the sofa and listen, and, and stop watching TV. And listen, the more you do the things you're doing and don't make changes, the more the more stuck in the mud you get and the harder it's gonna be to ever pull yourself out and make a change. So the more you're doing it, the less likely you're gonna to be to change it if you just stay on that course. So that's why I always talk about making one or two little changes. So what's worked for me is, you know, because I sit down here, it's like, I. I just don't want to go in my office. I just don't want to go sit in my office. So I've decided maybe I just need to minimize my office time. So I am determining Monday and Tuesday from the time I get my coffee until usually about nine o'clock at night, I am going to hammer everything I have to get done and get it done in two days. And then you know what? If I don't have to do anything for the rest of the five days, I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I will still build in some exercise. It's getting nice out. It's getting really nice to go for walks. Uh, but I won't feel the pressure that I should be doing something I'm not doing. So this is very personal. My situation is very different than probably the majority of you. But how do you deal with it if you're suddenly home from work or you've got a spouse or significant other that's suddenly home from work and now you're in each other's space, you both have to accomplish things? Um, that's really difficult. And I think, honestly, ladies, this is really difficult for the men who are used to being in the office and now they're home and they've got to try and do conference calls all day and this and that and there are kids running around or you're trying to do things, you're trying to find your own spaces to work. You might not have two offices in your house for him to go in one and you can go to go in the other or do your thing. So it's really important to figure out what you need and when you need it. So add to that now the people who have kids home and now you're homeschooling your kids, they need space to work. So you've got all these people who have very specific needs and they're all dealing with just the stress of so many other people being in their space that they just, it, it's very difficult to deal with. So probably the first thing you have to do is, is have a discussion. 
Like, what are your needs? And you know what? Maybe we're a little past that. It's still probably important, but maybe by now you know what people need. So if your husband needs to be on the phone all day on conference calls and whatever he needs, find him a space away from everybody. And, you know, this is where everybody's going to have to give a little. Maybe it's got to be a bedroom. Maybe it's got to be, you know, the basement, whatever it is. Find him a space where he can go, have privacy, be able to think clearly, but where you can still have space to do your stuff. And what is it you need to do? Think about the things you need to do. I said self-care, critical. What do you need to do apart from that from a work standpoint that you can figure out where you're going to plug into your day? So same thing if you're alone. Again, if you're alone and now suddenly you're home from a job that you're used to being in all day. And when you're there, you just get more done because you're there, you have no distractions and now you're home. And like me, first time I was home, just want to sit around and do nothing. So what is it you have to get done? When do you work most effectively? Okay, think about that. That's the number one thing. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? Do you work best five o'clock in the morning or do you work best 11 o'clock at night? Figure out when you work the best and then try and structure some time And again, this is where the discussion comes in helpful. Like, look, family, look, husband, I need this much time on a daily basis to accomplish what I have to accomplish. And the time I need to do it is 10 o'clock in the morning until noon. If I can have two hours uninterrupted, I can get an awful lot done and then be able to support you and help the kids with their homework, Um, you know, have food ready for everybody, do whatever you have to do. But then take those two hours and have the integrity to keep that promise to yourself that you're going to move off somewhere and get it done. So do you need to do something every day? Or like me, do you want to like really work long hours for a couple days and be done and then spend the rest of the time hanging with the kids, hanging with the puppies, hanging with your husband, whatever it is, but figure out what works best for you and find the time and the space to do it. Little things, you know, like I said, the self-care stuff is like at the top of the list important. You need to take care of yourself right now in all those ways so that you're physically strong to fight this. You're not going to fight it if you compromise your system and you're going to compromise it by feeding into the fear, by, you know, feeling less than solid in all those areas of your life. It, It makes a big difference. So really, really work hard to figure out what things you can do in each area of your life every single day to support yourself, to take care of yourself. So that being said, figure out then the time that's going to work for you the best. If it's morning, find some time in the morning and commit that. We talked about habit stacking last week, habit stack in that when you get your coffee, instead of sitting on the sofa, this is what I had to do when I was fighting that take my coffee, sit on the sofa thing. I got my coffee And I walked right past the sofa and walked right to my office and got to work. That's the only way it works for me. As soon as I detour, as soon as I stop to do something else, that's it. It's gone. I've just like, I've just like totally thrown that in the garbage. It's just not going to happen. So habit stack. As soon as you get your coffee, maybe move right to your office, walk right past the kids, right? Walk past everybody's situated. Everybody's doing their thing. And I know this, it sounds like it's utopian, like, yeah, this is, it doesn't work that well. It doesn't work easy. The kids are always calling me, but find pockets of time. This is why I talk about little things. Find pockets of time that you could commit to, to just say, I'm going in the room now. This is so great. My girlfriend's daughter put, I forget exactly what the setup was, like maybe a paper clip outside of her bedroom door. And she had little notes. One said, I'm busy doing schoolwork. One said, I'm good. Come on in. The other one said, you know, don't interrupt, whatever. And she would hang whatever was on the doorknob to say that. If you have to go lock yourself in for an hour or whatever, have a little way that, you know, a big red, just maybe a big red piece of paper. So if your kids are young, they don't have to know how to read. Just like if the red piece of paper is there, it means stop, means you can't come in until it's green. And so, you know, do what you have to, to honor yourself and give yourself what you need. And whether it's what you need as far as time to work or you need an hour in the tub with a good book to just get away from the news, get away from all that's going on, get lost in another world and just relax and take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. Okay. So whatever it is, protect your time. You're worth it. You are, you are the cornerstone of your family. 
there's just no question about that. And if you're not strong, what are you doing to that foundation? That cornerstone is the foundation of the whole building. It's, it's like critical to the structure of the whole building. And that's what you are. So you need to take care of that. So figure out what you need to take care of it. Find the time to do it and do what you have to, to force others to respect that time you need. And you'll only teach others to respect it by you respecting it first, by saying, no, I'm locked down right now. I'll talk to you in 50 minutes. I'll talk to you in an hour. Unless somebody's bleeding and needs to be rushed to the ER, I'm not available for the next hour. And then do what you have to do. So build that structure. I just really, really encourage you to recognize how critical it is, that it's not a luxury. Structure and finding time to take care of yourself and finding time to do the things you have to do is totally not a luxury. It's critical because if it's not just like the house on sand will collapse, you will collapse. You will weaken yourself to the very thing you're trying so hard to fight. Michelle, 1,440 minutes in a day. It's all about perspective, right? There's time. There's time to do a lot of the things we need to do. We don't even realize the time we squander, but there's time to do the things you need to do. So let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope, that was kind of it. So if you have any comments, throw them out here later. We can keep this discussion going all day. But one thing, figure out one thing you can do for yourself today. But seriously, the best thing you can do for yourself today is get in a quiet place with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and shut yourself down for even a half an hour and just say for half an hour, don't anybody bother me. And think about the things you need to accomplish for yourself personally, for your business, for your family, and take the time to figure out what are the things I need to do? When am I, when am I most able to give it my best? What time of day works best for me? And where am I going to fit that in and protect that time so I get things done? Structure is your friend. Structure is not a luxury. Structure is critical to not totally collapse. Okay, came late, but great message. Hey, Patty, hi. Yeah, if you came late, just you can watch the repeat anytime. But ladies, thank you for being here and uh, stay strong. Take care of yourself. You are the cornerstone. You are so important and it'll only help you and all your loved ones to get through this better if you can follow some of these tips. Start small, add on, and before you know it, you'll be in good shape. All right, ladies, have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy. I will see you next week.